I'll just edit that part out. Or not, it'll be part of the charm. Alright, let's get going here. So, I'm making one of these uh, vlogs where people are in a car and they're talking. Um, and I always thought that that was kind of dangerous on account of their driving distracted. Um, I've even seen some videos out there um, where a guy's on a motorcycle <laughs> and he's he's vlogging on a motorcycle, which I thought was just like really living on the edge, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm probably only going to look at the camera if I'm at a stop sign. Um, because if I was at a stop light, you know, the stop light can change. But a stop sign uh, doesn't change. It's going to stay the same whole time. Um, some parts of this video may be missing or re-jiggered later. On account of I'm probably going to try and cut out bits where street signs appear. Uh, if any street signs manage to crop up in this video. Um, so you'll, you'll know that that's what I'm doing. Although most of you probably already know where I live. Because most of my subscribers are people I know in real life. And, uh, see this is a stop light. It's all like glance down. Alright. Um, but... I wanted to talk a little bit about an anime I've been watching recently. Um, a lot of people probably already know this anime. Uh, in fact, just putting the title of it in my video is probably guaranteed to get me a few views. Um, it's Sword Art Online, and I have not finished Sword Art Online 2 yet. I'm about halfway through that one, so I'm just going to talk about the first series. About uh, well, I'm going to try and remember what the plot of the beginning part was, because I kind of started watching it, and I stopped watching it for like a, a decent while, like at least a month, I stopped entirely, and I came back to it, because, well, why not go back, you know? I was bored, and there was nothing to do, I had, you know, that disease that's going around, people get in the winter time, barfing and all that. You know, I, I should really stop saying I will put that because I, I know that I might not because I'm just so lazy. Okay, but uh, but yeah, let's see. So the plot is sorted online. For those of you who don't know, and apparently this anime is actually considered to be somewhat bad, and I can kind of see where people who say that are coming from, so I'll, I'll get to that. But anyways, the basic plot, in case you didn't know, is there's this video game out um, in Japan and I guess across the world but they don't meet a lot of people who are not from Japan so but anyways there's this video game that, that releases called Sword Art Online and everybody you know picks it up and it's the latest greatest thing it's in super high demand Oops. see what I mean about driving distracted god that's horrible <laughs> But, um, yeah, this game comes out, a bunch of people download it and play it for like a day or so, and everything's fine. And then they find out they can't log out of the game. And then the creator of the game, who's this kind of weird, kind of crazy scientist guy, he like shows up in a big event, and he's like, hey guys, uh, joke's on you because you can't log out of this game. Uh, the only way to get out is to beat it. Oh, and also, uh, you can die in real life if you die in the game. And it's like, oh, it's like the old Matrix thing, right? If you die in there, you die in real life. Okay. Um, and it came out after the Matrix, so it's actually, you know, it's entirely possible. And in fact, somewhat likely that they ripped a couple ideas off from there. And so, um, our basic plot line is we're following this guy named Kirito. Or as they say in the you know, uh, in, as they say in Japan, Kirito, Kirito-san, or whatever. Uh, so we're just following him on his adventures in, in the game um, for like a couple of years, because they, you know, they it takes a long time to beat this game. There's like a big t tower thing, and there's like 
hundred floors of dungeons, and they're these huge sprawling dungeons, and it really does just take forever to get out of them. Oh, well that was pointless. It just wanted me to merge back in. Okay, well, um, okay, but, uh, let's see. Yeah, so he's kind of an OP character, and this is probably one of the first grievances people have. I mean, like, I know Goku's kind of OP, right? Like, the point of Dragon Ball Z is, oh, we're just waiting for Goku to get here and punch the baddies. But, like, Kirito is also really OP. He basically, I mean, he struggles, but there's literally nothing in the game that actually kills him. I mean, there's, like, this one enemy that, in one of the episodes, uh, he can't manage to defeat, but, like, nobody in the game could, so it's not, like, a big deal. Oh, and I guess there's that other time. But that other time he lost to somebody who was, like, cheating in the game, so that, you know, that doesn't count either. Uh, what I'm saying is he's, it's like, not really a contest. He's like super powerful, he's super strong, he's super fast, his, he's got this sword thing going on, and he looks super cool. Uh, he, he's um, one of a select group of gamers. Oh, I can run this light. It's still green. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not speeding. Uh, probably. So he can kind of... Um, Let's see, what did I say? Oh yeah, he looks super cool. Uh, he's one of a select group of gamers, right? So um, they are gamers who played kind of a beta test of the game. So they know a little bit extra and their characters are also a little bit leveled up from everybody else's. So then like in the beginning, you know, there's all this competition and people are like, well, if you're you're a, a beta tester, you know, that that's kind of like cheating too. In this game, because you're, uh, you know, they're they're like, well, I mean, you're kind of, you're kind of cheating, because you, uh, you're actually, you know, more than the rest of us about this game, and, and you know, all the a lot of the beta testers, I believe, form some kind of group, and they try to like lord it over everybody else and sell information for game money and that kind of thing. And then there's a bunch of other guilds, which are, you know, like big groups of players that kind of band together so that they can keep each other alive, you know, the more the merrier. If you have a healer standing behind you, you can, you can take on many more monsters than if you did not. But, um, but most of the time Kirito is just on his own and he's kind of going around meeting all these characters. And of course, and this is another thing a lot of people probably don't like about the show, um, all the, almost all the girls in the show fall in love with him. Um, and I know that's kind of dumb, <laughs> because it's like, I mean, he's kind of scrawny, he's not actually super good looking, I mean, I guess for like an anime protagonist he looks okay. But it's like, really, he's not that good looking. And he's not even, like, I mean, I guess he's a decent person, right? Like, he's not a terrible person. We'll put, put it that way. But he's not, like, a great person who's super easy to get along with, either. You know, he's kind of stubborn and, stubborn and weird. He doesn't really follow the rules of the game. Because a lot of players join guilds, but he's special because he's always on his own and he's, you know, solo running all these dungeons and stuff. It's really very deep, and, or not deep, it's a really very special, you know. But I honestly, it's just like, what, what do all these anime girls see in him? And of course, you know, he gets a girlfriend in the game and they're, they're like a cute couple, I guess. And so then it's like really funny because even after that, even after they're like seeing each other, he still is like hanging out with all these girls and they still like him. <laughs> like, like that, that's something I've seen in the second series is, you know, 
he's like, he's like still hanging out with girls and they're still kind of falling for him. And it, it's like, come on, dude, you, you have a girlfriend. Stop it. Stop. But don't. Um, but anyway, I guess I get a, got a little bit off track talking about the plot of the game. I don't want to spoil too much. It's apparently, it's, it's one of those animes that's based on a manga, so they just fall, I, I don't know how closely they follow the plot of the manga in the game, and a manga in the anime, but I didn't have too many complaints. Because I didn't actually read any of the manga, so I wasn't able to judge that. I think, I don't know, there was kind of a genuine surprise, I guess, in the anime. Um, there's like a big surprise reveal, oh, this, this has been this, this whole time, you know, since I'm trying not to spoil it, and you're like, okay, I can, like, you can tell after the fact, you can be like, oh, these were all a bunch of hints that were you know, dropped by the people, or this one episode was a hint dropped by a bunch of people, I guess, um, because that's, that's right, they just give, like, a whole, they devoted this whole episode to Kirito, like, fighting this character, and then you're like, oh, well, I guess the reason they did that was because you're supposed to kind of wonder who this character is. And you find out, and you're like, oh, I probably should have seen this coming. I could have made that play. Uh, oh, I could go in there. Maybe after this is done. Are we still going? Yeah, we're still going, okay. Let's see. So then, like, I guess the other character in the anime, the one you should... You'll probably, you won't mind if I say who it is, you know. Uh, the other character's name is Asuna, and she's the, um, she's the Goral. She's, like, the, the girl warrior. They meet, and, like, she, she meets Kirito in, like, the first episode, and they just kind of keep running into each other. So she's, like, a recurring character. Um, I mean, honestly, most of the characters in this anime are kind of bland. I want to see. Well, at least the main characters. See, well, well, Kirito's kind of weird, I guess, so that's not super bland. But, like, Asuna's kind of bland. She's just like, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a warrior, can-do fighter, you know. And there's not a ton more to her character, I guess. You don't really get, like, a ton of backstory for her. As far as I can tell, as far as I can remember, they don't say, like, oh, she has this tragic past. Or even that she has, like, a, a particular past. Like, in the show, they do say that she... I mean, they do say later. Like, way after um, the middle of the series, even. They say way later, oh, by the way, Asuna's got all of this backstory here in the real world. And, and um... We're gonna find out more about her, I guess. But, like, she... She fades further and further into the background as the series goes on. Like, she's pretty important in... In the first series, the first, uh... Sword Art Online. Like, she's pretty important throughout that. But then, like, in the second one, she is... You know, she just kind of is there in episodes. It's like they remembered, oh, well, we should have episodes with her in them, right? Because she's, like, a character that we've had for a long time. But they don't really seem to know what to do with her. She just kind of stands on the sidelines for most of it. And it's kind of like, ah, oh, really? Like, you could have developed her more. Yeah, so it turns out I was actually really wrong about this point uh, in the second series because at this, uh, at the time of recording this, I actually know 
more <laughs> about the second series because I finished watching it some time ago. So, yes, they do go back and develop Asuna later. Um, the whole kind of second arc, or the whole second half of that season of the show is... Is and it's all about her character, and it's all about developing her, giving her some backstory, giving her kind of a, this relationship with her mom, and um, yeah, pretty much I was completely wrong on this point. There are there's like sections of the anime where they forget about her, but they always bring her back, and they did great things with her character in in the last. In the last half of the second series. So, yeah. And I'm not sure what people's gripes are with the show, but I will say that a lot of it is really predictable. Like, when I was watching it, I was like, this is going to happen. And I was right. Like, a lot of the time. It's, like, so predictable. You're like, well, gee, I wonder what is going to be the deal with this character. Like, the way... The way they animate this character suggests that he's a villain. So I wonder if he's a villain. Like, they didn't say yet. Exactly. You know, maybe he's just a one-off, kind of terrible person. But, um, sure enough... Yeah, that was a villain. Um, I guessed it from the start, I was like, way ahead of their game. And so that might be something people didn't like about it. Um, they might not also like the fact that they kind of try to retroactively put stuff into the series that didn't happen. Like, they build, they build that stuff around other events that did happen. Um, and so, and it's not, like, terrible, but it's like, you can almost tell that they didn't really have a plan at the beginning, and they now they do, so they are going to, you know, they're going to plan out this much of this story. And uh, at about the midway point, I was really surprised. I was like, wait, this whole s story seems like it's over. What is there left to do? Uh, what is there left for these characters to accomplish? And then, uh... Well, it really is not parking here. Um... But yeah, it's like totally a, uh, a reasonable question. And they don't really, uh... They don't... Well, I guess they have an answer, actually, for what do we do now. And... It's to say, okay, well, um, you know, they may have defeated this bad guy, but there's, like, another one who's doing, like, a really similar thing, and he's kidnapped Asuna, and he's holding her hostage, and he's holding a bunch of other people hostage. So they have to get him, you know. And, uh... So you're like, oh, okay, I guess they did kind of know what they were doing. But overall, what, what else is there to say about Sora? What, what could people not like about it? Um, maybe that it's cheesy in places? Uh, maybe that, honestly, it's pretty dumb? The animation is, like, I know anime was designed as a style to be cheap to make. But, like, the animation on Sword Art is pretty cheap for a lot of it. I mean, it looks better, I guess, when there's a fight scene going on. They do some fluid stuff. But, um, you know, there's an overabundance of these panning shots that establish the scene. You see these in a lot of animes. But there's, like, an overabundance of them. And then there's way, way, way way a lot of scenes where uh, characters just don't move for extended periods. And then whenever they're doing crowds, they really don't animate the crowds. They just have a picture 
around. I know these are like common tricks or in enemies, but like something about the way this particular one executes it is just like cheaper and lazier than other stuff I've seen. Um, like I watched another anime, Serial Experiments Lane, and the animation on that was like more fluid and more kind of dynamic, I guess, and better done. And then also in this anime series I watched called uh, Steins Gate. Um, like they managed to, just, they just had better character designs too. Like, like the character designs in Sword Art are fine, I guess. They, they at least don't run into the mistake of making the design too busy. So naturally, uh, nothing can go 100% perfectly, which is why, oh, roughly five to ten minutes of my my uh, previous recording got lost. So that's great. I love that when that happens because it gets, means I get to refilm things. Um, get to. But anyway, let's see. Um, I was talking about Steins Gate and character design and stuff. And the character designs are fine in here, but they look kind of generic. Like I, I said before, that um, the main character Kirito's design, he looks like he can be in, he could have been in like a couple of different animes because of how generic he looks. He just looks kind of oh, I'm the dark, brooding, mysterious guy. Uh, which is hardly, it's, it's hardly anything new, you know, for an anime. That's been in plenty of stuff. Um, but yeah, but I did say that at least the monster designs are good. Um, you know, they really are pretty creative with what the monsters can do, what they look like. And the animation, the fight sequences is not as bad as it is in the rest of it. But I kind of, you know, I kind of forgot most of what I, what, I, what all I said, I guess. Forgot what else I was talking about with that. I believe I listed off a bunch of characters. I don't know. I guess, yeah, I, I guess I didn't say that while I was still being recorded, so I'll, uh, I'll talk about that then. Basically, there's a bunch of girl characters, and all the girl characters fall in love with the protagonist, because of course they do. And they're not written all super well. Some of them are written to be kind of dumb. Oh, that's why it's slowing down. Um, so that's, that part is kind of, kind of bad. Let's see. There's the main girl, Asuna. And, uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, she's pretty normal and pretty much just your standard character. Who's kind of a warrior fighter and determined and such. There is the shopkeeper, Liz, who is, um, who doesn't really have much character either. She, she's kind, she's like really bland. She's just another girl character that falls in love with Kira, basically. Um, there's the girl with the, like, pet. And she doesn't really do anything except fall for Kira. And, um... Let's see. There's the guy with the red hair. Who actually is kind of interesting. He's mostly defined by his relation, his, uh, he's defined by his friendship, I guess, with Kirito, because they keep running into each other, and he is always kind of trying to do the right thing, and to kind of protect Kirito when his weirdness gets him into trouble, which it does a couple of times that I can remember. So he's not terrible. And then, uh, let's see, who else is there? Um, there's, um... Oh. There's Kirito's cousin, 
who that who is like a sister to him and her falling in love with him is really messed up but they went with it anyway <sighs> so that was that was bizarre there's a whole kind of plot line about that I guess spoiling it too much is bad so I will not do that um and then there's a girl who's introduced in the second series, um, and she's kind of a gunslinger. She has a really kind of interesting past, an uh, interesting backstory, but I always kind of thought that she was a little bit too weak, but I guess it's part of development that a character starts out weak and gets stronger. They also kind of drop her character. And they definitely don't bring her character back in a big way. They just have her on the sidelines. So, let's see, is that everybody? Oh yeah, there's this, There's a couple of other characters who are only there for an episode or two, and then they leave, or Kirito leaves. But I wanted to kind of say my overall thoughts on the anime. Overall, I quite like it. I recognize that it's fundamentally pretty flawed, um, but they did improve stuff in the second series, and they're supposed to be coming out with a third one at some point, but uh, good luck tracking out, tracking down any information about that that isn't wrong. I found some articles somewhere where they were like, oh yes, the new season is going to come out in 2017, it's going to be a, a big deal, and then... Uh, no word, so. Yes, um, I would recommend watching, like, one or two episodes, and if you just can't get past how dumb parts of it are, well, don't <laughs> keep watching it. I mean, there are better animes out there, the ones I mentioned earlier in this video, and maybe you don't even like anime, so then just don't watch anime. It's better that way. Uh, that you don't force yourself to watch things that you hate. Um, but other than that, this has been a dutiful vlog, car vlog rant thing about Sorted Online, and uh, now it's over.